Welcome back to Crit and Crit. I'm Axion. I'm Sint. And we are continuing our discussion of Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson and our playthrough of The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. That's what so I So mean. it's it's kind of weird to see a Zelda game where there's not like a variation on Ganondorf as the as the bad guy. Yeah, the handheld games are a bit odd like that. Um, they've got these two games where the villains are the uh, unique characters to them. Uh, you've got all the Game Boy game, or the Game Boy Advance games, where the villain is uh, Vadi the Wind Mage. Yeah, I remember, I play, remember playing Minish. Um... I mean, slight spoilers, but you've got uh, a link between worlds with uh, everything to do with low roll. Yeah, but even then, there's still a Ganon involved. He's just more behind yeah. the scenes. I think I know what treasure we're getting in this dungeon as well. Friendship? Uh, no, the jumping feather. That would make sense, too. But yeah, I kind of brought this up because, well, it kind of ties into our topic today of, like, Ganondorf is always bringing an evil empire with him, and, well, Mistborn has an evil empire, too. How do you, how do you evil empire? Well, you have a lot of options. Because, uh, if there's one thing humanity has tried a lot of, it's evil empires. <laughs> We could get into a lot of the uh, baggage regarding empires, but I think we've kind of done that in other stories, and probably have better stories to do that in. For here, we're kind of just talking about the logistics of that, what that means for your setting, and overall, what that's going to mean for your story. So, you need an emperor, someone who is in charge of something. Okay, so we have the Lord Ruler. He has total control, more so than you see in most historical uh, empires or kingdoms. Mm -hmm. The idea of an empire implies that you have conquered other places. Which, well, we know that there used to be, like, the terrorist homeland, so, yeah, that would, that would uh, put... Uh, the countries of, uh... The planet is Skadrill. I don't actually know what the, what the world is called, what the, what the country is called. Uh... The country in the modern days is called the Final Empire. Okay, we'll go with the Final Empire, then. Yeah, they, they explicitly don't have other countries anymore. I think they have districts? But they're dominances, or, dominances yeah, or like, provinces, but they're like they're just the outer provinces, the the northern dominance. Yeah. yeah, it's not like named; they're they're regions because and they're there all is, part of the same empire. And there is some power to that. Of a uh, well, words have power. If you take away the name for something, it becomes harder to discuss it. Um, this is a very 1984 concept, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, which someday we'll get to that. It's on the but, uh, uh, yeah. possible to-do list later. Short version is that in the world of 1984, um, one of the party's jobs is to remove words from the dictionary because it limits thought. Their ultimate goal is to get down to a single word. And Isn't that's, that fun? That's why they have Newspeak and... Yep, but I don't want to get too far. I don't want to get too far down the uh, 1984 rabbit hole when, yeah. until we get to 1984. I could go on, but so yeah, we have your land. We have your leader. We have evidence of a conquering. We have a very, very clear class distinction. Now, necessarily, there doesn't 
maybe have to be class a class system, but it's easier to keep your people controlled if you have people you can delegate to. And one of the easier ways to do that is to give special privileges to certain members of the population, which thereby de facto creates your ruling class. Go, Link, go. I don't remember how to solve this puzzle. You pushed a button. Yes, but the button doesn't stay pushed. If I get off it, the door closes. I don't know why you're expecting me to give you helpful advice. When have I ever done that on the show? <laughs> okay, fair point. I did not recognize that I was being trolled. Why? This is not a new thing! <laughs> I didn't say it was. I just said I didn't recognize it. But, yeah. Um, delegation is, I think, a necessary part of any sort of empire. Um, especially, like, even more getting into fictional examples like this one. The Lord Ruler is the absolute ruler who has power, but he, even he delegates things. Like, certain noble houses are in charge of... Looks like you've solved it. Yep, I figured it out. Yeah. Are in charge of certain aspects of the economy. Uh, most notably, the Venture is in charge of his ATM mines. Okay. Now you have a new problem. But now that I know what to do, I can just respawn the room. They're certainly making you earn your progress. See what I have to deal with, people? A delightful sense of humor. <laughs> but yeah, so... The Lord Ruler cannot be everywhere at once because, well... He's not actually the omnipotent godlike being he wants people to think he is. He's just a very powerful Alamancer and Veracomist. So he delegates control of certain aspects of his of nation's rulership to others. The noble houses, as we mentioned, uh, Venture, as, as we already mentioned, one of the chief ones. There is also the fact that he has to delegate things to the obligators and the inquisitors. He's not going to run his own church. He's not going to be personally going around and hunting down uh, uh, illegal children. He's going to have somebody else do that for him. It's an important aspect of maintaining the control he wants to maintain, but he's not going to do every single thing himself. So, and we've already seen just from discussing the plot how influential all of these different factors are in a uh, the day-to-day -day runnings of society in Lufidel. Like, the obligators are so omnipresent that Vin is astonished to see that they're just there to listen in on rumors and gossip at parties and are often called over to witness, like, little bets and promises and things. The nobility don't even think twice about them because they're just so there constantly. And it's, like, it's not even, like, important stuff. They're, like, notaries... But, like, the nobility are using them for, like, stupid little bets and promises of, oh, I'll be, I'll at, be this... at that game tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be at this party the... this other day because I've apparently missed too many parties and now people don't believe me when I say I'm going to be there. Yep. And this can kind of go into a little, a little more on class warfare that we already have talked about. But uh, the difference between how the nobility and the Ska view the Obligators is stark. And you can kind of see that similarly today in how different groups of people view real-world equivalents uh, in law enforcement. I was about to say, police? I, not just police, I would say, like, because... This kind of goes back to the to just other things we've heard. Like, if the punishment for something is a fine, that means it's legal for rich people sort of thing. So, in that case, it's not just a matter of viewing the police differently, it's viewing the law itself differently. If I can afford to pay the penalty for this, then I'm just going to do it if it's more convenient for me. And I think that's how the nobility tends to see things. Because, like, 
Vin is blown away at how expensive the gowns she needs for her infiltration are. Like, the, for the cost of one of the gowns she wears to one party, she could live for years comfortably. Mm -hmm. So, due to the privileges granted them through the Lord Ruler's delegation of various aspects of his society, life has a very different meaning to the nobility than it does to the Ska. So, yeah, when you delegate your responsibilities, you give people a certain sense of importance, and with that comes, naturally, a caste system. They go out of their way to enforce this very, very strictly, more so than, like, almost any society I can think of, really, when it would actually do IRL, but you still see that. And because people enjoy having this level of privilege, they are tacitly inspired to help maintain that level of control. Yep. So yeah, an evil empire works best if you implement a class system because then you can get the upper classes to, to fight for you. Because what are they going to do? Betray the person who has made them super powerful? Very, very rare that you'd see that. They're not going to, unless you have a very rare exception such as Elland, do anything that would not benefit the rest of them in some way. I have no idea what this puzzle is supposed to do, by the way. Uh, I'm supposed to make the bottom row match the top row. Can you push all of them? Yes. I would not have pushed that one. Yeah. That's the thing, is I'm trying to figure out... I know what to do, or what I need to do. I'm trying to figure out the precise order. Why would you push that one up? To get it out of the way. But, like, if you need the Romans... Push that one down. Push the red ones down, both of them, and you're fine. I needed to get it out of the way so I could push this one across. But you could have pushed it across by shoving that one down anyway. Never mind. I figured it out either way. So, yeah. So again, control. We've delegated certain aspects of power so we can maintain control more efficiently. This control comes in the form of very, very, very strict guidelines for what the Ska are allowed to do. Very, very few of them are allowed to have, like, artisan positions like Clubs' carpentry shop. Yep. For the, most, for the most part, they are treated more or less like livestock. In fact, we can see this exactly like livestock because... Uh... There's a few times where noble characters such as Sean explicitly refer to them as such. See, I'm saying more or less on the grounds of uh, the matter of uh, mixed breeding, and I don't really want to think about people getting intimate with their livestock. That's how you get minotaurs. But, yeah. You could probably go on for quite a rant about uh, the implications of, we're going to call the Ska no better than animals, and then we're going to um, <clears throat> do things with our, quote, animals. I don't really want to go down that road, so I'm happy to avoid the subject. All I'll say on it is, there is historical precedent. Caligula is not a role model, Axion. I would agree. Anyway, so this control extends to um, can't have very limited careers, um, a thriving criminal underclass because that's really the only option that many of them have. Like we're introduced to Vin, and she's not even like part of like. A proper thieving guild. She's just de dealing with like a str some street thugs because that's just the situation she found herself in. Yep. 
And yet, despite the fact that there's a very clear rule about, no, you two, you two groups do not intermix, the fact that, like, half the cast exists tells you that, you know, the nobility ca don't care about the rules. They'll follow them when they're forced to, and that's about it. And either many of them are... I think it's I think it's a bit of both that many of them are just lazy about bothering to follow the rules with regards to what you're supposed to do with your ska entertainment. And some of them are just bad at it. And I think it's a, it's a combination of I'm too good for this, I don't have to follow the rules and I'm lazy and don't think I'll get caught. Or the other option of, it's been mentioned several times throughout the book that some Ska women are able to easily pass as noble women and fool them long enough. Like, uh, Tavidian mentions that he didn't know that Vin's mother was Ska until quite some time after the fact. Yep. And so he didn't get to her in time. Uh, Kelsier and Marsh, I believe, were basically raised as nobles because their mom kept their dad fooled. For, until it was like, well, he's already acknowledged us. Not gonna back out now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, which kind of goes further to disprove the whole like, there's a there's a physical difference between the cast. Uh, apparently not. If you fell for it, dude. And that's kind of the thing that Ellen is on when we meet him. Uh, he's. says several times in both his conversations with Vin and with his friends uh, that he keeps increasingly finding evidence that Ska are not as dumb as the Lord Ruler would have you uh, have them believe. And even admits that Vin had them fooled completely. Yep. And oh, I thought you'd be able to jump up there. And while we're on the subject of delegation and control, um, this also extends to Alamancy because Kelsier himself has to do this, even though he's our he's on our side. Um, we see this most clearly with how Vin is taught her, the various metals. Kelsier personally teaches her to push and pull, but she makes sure, like he makes sure that one because he's got limited time to teach her before his plan goes off. Um, he doesn't have he so he outsources. Hey Breeze, I need you to show her about uh, soothing, and you, she can kind of extrapolate on rioting from there. And because being a mistborn apparently makes you a uh, jack of all trades, master of none, unless you're very careful about that, because Kelsier is not as good at the other metals as those who only have that one metal to work with. Yep, and that's part of what makes Vin such a prodigy is that. Uh, she takes to pretty much all the metals relatively quickly and with minimal difficulty, and she doesn't have a lot of the hang-ups that Kelsier and other Mistborn have about using some of the lesser-used metals uh, being something that they're not super experienced with and don't have a lot of talent with. They have the ability, but they don't have the experience. And Vin seems to, through a combination of her own natural ability and Kelsier insisting on not uh, handling her training single-handedly, um, manages to bypass that. Yep. Like, you definitely learn a lot better from somebody who has studied this specific thing for a long time than somebody who kind of has a background in it. Like, there's a reason that, just using school as an example, there's a reason you don't learn math in my class. I am good at a lot of things. Um, math was always my struggle point, so yep. I would not be a, an effective teacher for that. Like, I, I was a good student, I got good grades in it, but I know I couldn't teach it very well. But this also extends to Kelsier's role with the guild. Like, he's absolutely the one in charge who comes up with the ideas and everything, but 
he's more than happy to delegate to the others. Like he knows he can trust them to do what they need to do without having to watch over their shoulder constantly, which is honestly somewhat of a, of a rare ability when it comes to a manager. He does not need to micromanage every aspect of their heist. He knows that Vin's doing her part, he knows that Ham's doing his part, and so on and so forth. He can let, let his criminal empire, so to speak, flourish because he knows that everybody knows what they need to be doing and are very good at what they do. So this all this make very make that makes it much easier for him to get into the palace and start looking around for stuff because he knows that even if he's not doing something at that moment, everybody else is still going to be doing what they need to do. Which kind of brings me to the next part of uh, running your empire, because what Kelsier and Vin find is a piece of lost history that the Lord Ruler has carefully, carefully publicly edited because what we learn is that this is the diary of the person who was actually supposed to go and fulfill the prophecy before he got betrayed at the 11th hour by his uh pacman rashek who is again the true identity of the lord ruler who then imprisoned his entire race so they couldn't you know Snitch. tell anyone who he was So, you know, there's all sorts to unpack there. But one of the one of the strongest ways to maintain your hold on power is to make it sound like you've always had it. Yep. Revisionist history is a powerful tool ripe for misuse. So, to clarify here, this is not the same thing as we discovered new evidence, so we should re really re-examine these things in light of this new evidence. This is, this makes me look bad and I don't like it, so I'm going to change that. We can definitely, definitely get into more depth on this with a later book that I've already started taking notes on. But just we'll as a there. concept, we'll get there. We, we'll get there. We'll get there. It's okay. I should clarify again. Um, so, though I'm an English teacher, I actually have a degree in history, so there are a few things that push my buttons as hard as people who are obviously blatantly lying about the past for their own personal gain. Even if that own personal gain is just, it makes me feel good for a minute and actually, you know, doesn't really do anything other than that. Because if you change history, you don't learn from history, and humanity doesn't get any better. We continue being completely useless and worthless. We need to learn from history. And sometimes, you know what? You should be embarrassed by history. That's how you know you've moved on from it. That's how you know you've gotten better. If you're not cringing when you study history, you've not been taught it correctly. But yeah, the fact that the Lord Ruler has been able to rewrite things so thoroughly is another reason that he's able to maintain his hold on power so securely. And for that, he has... That's, a, that's another major job of the Obligators. Since they handle his faith, they handle much of the knowledge and information about how he came to power and how his authority works. They're the ones that tell people and explain to people why he is a god. And we, I even, mean, we even see this when the, uh, the main characters interact with the Lord Ruler himself. He doesn't explain himself. He just states it like it's a fact. It's really easy to confidently state a lie, though. It is. Yeah, you know how I know? I was in drama club for all of high school. It's called acting. Acting. But, yeah, but we also see how he enforces this 
just with uh, his use of control. They keep soothing stations all around Luthadel to make sure that the population doesn't get riled up enough to rebel. They are under a constant emotional manipulation, and he radiates that very, very strongly himself. That's a hole. Yes, it is. So, through his use of allomancy, in addition <clears throat> to his use of political capital, the Lord Ruler makes it very, very difficult, nigh impossible, to stand up to him. You need to have the allomantic abilities that the, that the crew has to be able to do it. As we've seen several times when they have to go out for, you know, those public executions and everything that he wants to make a spectacle of, then Kelsier keep their copper clouds up because otherwise every, everybody around them would have been overcome with remorse and depression. Like, Vin gets hit with it really, really hard when she loses her medals in the palace. This is not your day. It is not. I should have waited until the uh, speed boost was gone. But yeah, that's how you want an evil empire. You make sure you have the people who have power, the people who don't, a line clearly drawn between them. It enforces itself, and you try to limit the ability of those up beneath you to have any superpowers. Also, all the politics stuff. Yep. Anything else, Dad? It's maybe unclear, but it's pretty easy, if you know how, to make this an analog to real-life political power. Just substitute, you know, magic superpowers controlling metals for something like access to monetary resources, access to life-saving medicine, access to... Just access to things. Ah, I got grabbed. Well, I mean, think about it this way. Batman's superpower is money. Yeah. And... If you put it... If you look at it through that lens, you can see how the limitations of the Ska can be read as a metaphor for people of limited means being forced to get by on what they can scrape together with a handful of them having had at one point, thanks to luck, family connections, uh, convenience of fate, whatever you want to say, uh, having access to resources that otherwise remain in the hands of the upper class. Ah, yes, here we are. This is what I was trying to get back to. Ah. But yeah, that's that's all I've got. All right, until next time. See ya.